let's talk about the periodic trend for effective nuclear charge. We'll start by drawing in a general outline of the periodic table on which we can draw out our trends. So let's say beneath this black outline, this is where our elements are within the periodic table. The first trend we will talk about is as we move from left to right across a period. A period is a row within the periodic table. So as we move from the left to the right across this period, the effective nuclear charge or Z effective will increase or go up. Let's talk about why that is. Why does the effective nuclear charge increase across a period? We can understand this by analyzing the equation for Z effective, which is equal to the nuclear charge Z minus the shielding constant of S. As we move across a period, the nuclear charge Z will increase because the number of protons present in the nucleus increases. You can see in lithium that there are three protons present in the nucleus, and therefore Z is equal to three. But in oxygen, Z equals eight, where there are eight protons. Remember that lithium and oxygen are both in the second period of the periodic table, meaning that Z will increase as you move from left to right. And while Z increases, what happens to the screening constant of S? S will not change much, and this is mainly because the core electrons stay the same. There are two of them as you move across the second period of the periodic table, because there can be a maximum of two electrons that fill up this first energy level, where n is equal to 1. Because there are only two core electrons present here, the screening of the valence electrons, circled in green here, in both atoms, stays approximately equal. While the valence electrons can partially screen one another from the nuclear charge, the core electrons play into this screening constant the most. And therefore, because the core electrons, the number of core electrons is the same, as we move across the periodic table, the screening constant S will not change much. Therefore, because Z increases in this equation, and S doesn't change much and stays for, for most purposes, approximately constant. The effective nuclear charge will also increase to this equation as they are directly proportional. And therefore, this means effective nuclear charge increases as we move from left to right across a period. Now that we have talked about the trend for the effective nuclear charge as we move from left to right across a period, let's talk about the trend for Z effective as we move down a group or a column within the periodic table. As we move down a group, the effective nuclear charge, Z effective, remains approximately constant. Let's talk about why this is the case. Why does the effective nuclear charge remain approximately the same as you move down a group in the periodic table? Let's start by again writing out the equation for the effective nuclear charge, equal to the nuclear charge Z minus the screening constant S. As an example, as you move from lithium to sodium in group one of the periodic table, you can see that the nuclear charge again increases, just like we saw when moving from left to right across a period. For lithium, Z is equal to three, or three protons. In sodium, Z is equal to 11, or 11 protons. Now, how about the screening? This is where moving down a group differs from moving across a period. As you can see, compared to lithium, sodium has a significantly greater number of core electrons that screen the outer valence electrons from the nuclear charge. You can see that lithium has two inner core electrons that screen the outer valence electrons circled in red. However, in sodium, there are a total of 10 core electrons or inner electrons, circled in green, that screen the single valence electron in the n equals three energy level, circled in red. So while the nuclear charge increases, the screening constant S also increases as you move down a group. And so qualitatively, what does this mean? 
Well, as the nuclear charge increases, the outer valence electrons are able to feel more of the nuclear charge as you move down a group. However, as S increases, where the screening via the core electrons, the valence electron is blocked from the nuclear charge more and more by these core electrons. And so S then incre increases, and it can't feel as much of that nuclear positive charge. So what is the end result of all this? Well, by looking at our equation for Z effective, circled in red, we can see that if we increase Z and we increase S, these two numbers or changes will tend to counterbalance and offset each other. And what this means is that the effective nuclear charge will end up not changing, or not changing by very much, as we move down a group in the periodic table. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.